So hey guys, you just heard a part of the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme song from the 80s. And that is because for today's movie review, I'm going to be talking about the documentary Turtle Power. Or I should say Turtle Power, the definitive history of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the much longer title. Um, this was a film that came out in 2014. It's a documentary film. It didn't really get much of a release. I think it went, um, I think it had an iTunes rental and maybe some other rental places had it, you know, like online and uh, through internet media. But it really didn't get much of a theatrical release, unfortunately. And that's really too bad because Paramount did produce this. And it really does feel like something that we probably could have at least gotten at like Sundance or something that, you know, someplace that showed documentary features theatrically even if it wasn't a big budget theater company like Marcus Theater or anything. But Turtle Power, the definitive history of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles full title again, is basically the story on how let me get their names up here. I always seem to get their names wrong. Of Peter Lard and Kevin Eastman. They are the original creators of the Turtles. And they kind of came up with these turtles on accident. And it was one of those things where they just had another con another comic book they had to do by contract. And so they released this big comic book. They had, you know, not a lot of money at the time. Kind of released it on accident in a way. And so it kind of became this kind of a joke of whatever the modern day comic books were at the time. And they did their own little kind of spoof on that. And they also kind of did a, a, an homage to... Um, comic book creators that they have admired very much and you know they kind of want to have their own take on their stories that they really liked a lot and growing up and so this movie is all about that it's all about you know how they made the turtles how the turtles were successful how the how these turtles have you know impacted the, our culture and how it's impacted these two gentlemen's lives and it's really all about you know kind of how just the turtles have impacted everybody and kind of how this little happy accident became this franchise that's been huge you know in both tv shows movies video games toys merchandise it's just big everywhere and it's to continue to grow to this day you know we just had a movie last year and we're going to have more sequels from what i've heard about it from what they're planning on doing in the future so the turtles aren't done we're still getting a lot of ninja turtle stuff to this day so that this is a franchise that's growing and getting bigger and this movie's all about that huge success that Lard and Eastman have created with this franchise that just continues to grow to this day, and this movie very much celebrates that. So for my positives and negatives of Turtle Power, uh, the film has some great making of information, you know, how exactly Lard and Eastman came up with this idea and kind of how, you know, their inspiration, their influences to become comic book artists very much kind of created this, and how even small stuff that you would never think of how you know, one of them was very much like Raphael and how one of them was very much like Donatello and how, um, and I actually didn't even know this until I watched the documentary, how Michelangelo is loosely based off of one of their more comedic comic artists who were working with them at the time when they first created the Turtles. You had how Leonardo was, once again, based off another comic book artist who helped them get this thing off the ground. And just some really interesting stuff that you would never really think of until watching this documentary. And so it was just really kind of interesting to see exactly how this got made and kind of how this little happy accident became huge it became humongous and you know they would they went several different directions with it you know who would have ever guessed you could put ninja turtles in space and you know things of that nature so uh it just really kind of goes over some really great making of things of exactly how these turtles got famous and why exactly they're the big phenomena that they are today the film also has some rare photos and video footage of basically Mirage Studios when it was at its beginning. That's a studio that Lard and Eastman made as they, you know, made these Ninja Turtle comic books. Um, and, you know, it shows rare foot footage and rare photos of what they were doing behind the scenes and what they were doing when they were having fun and what they were doing, you know, when business got busy and they had to make a new comic book. And, you know, they had to, they, they briefly covered, you know, the kind of the business end of the thing and how, you know, they, they were able to have fun, but at the same time, they, you know, had to take care of this, you know, big studio and this house that they rented out and how that rented house became, you know, an actual building and actually became an actual business later on. And uh, it's just really interesting to see all those rare footage and the rare video footage and the rare photos that, you know, are all going on 
as the Ninja Turtles were getting made and getting their first issues released as comic books and kind of how those comic books eventually led into toys and TV shows and things like that, which Lard and Eastman were also a part of, which I also thought was pretty interesting. The film also shows the um, cultural impact of the Ninja Turtles, like I briefly covered earlier. But the film really does show just how huge the impact has been. Kind of how, you know, when they made the first Ninja Turtles movie, you know, nobody showed up in the first 45 minutes of the screening. But in the last 15 minutes, everybody was there. It was a huge screening. There were some people that they actually had to leave at the front door because they just didn't have room for them in the theater for that first screening of the day. And uh, it just really showed just how many people really had faith in the Ninja Turtles and kind of how it became just a small little comic book on a shelf somewhere and how it became this huge big thing where, you know, we have video games and movies and comic books and TV shows and merchandise and even little shot glasses available at certain stores of the Ninja Turtles. And it just really shows just how big these things have gotten and how big this story has gotten and just how big these characters have gotten. And the film really does a very good job with showing just how big these Ninja Turtles have gotten over the course of the years. The film also has some very unique end credits. It's definitely, you know, not the best end credit sequence I've ever seen, but it was just kind of interesting to see how it was behind the scenes and, you know, making of the movie and, um, you know, rare illustrations that Eastman and Lard had of the Ninja Turtles as it was getting made. Uh, just a really unique end credit sequence and, I like how they did that over just, you know, going straight to credits and going the traditional movie way of, you know, black screen, white type, and, you know, and credits rolling. But, uh, yeah, like I said, I like how it was very unique and how they were showing rare illustrations and things like that as the end credit sequence was progressing. One of the more funner moments in the movie for me was seeing all the voice artists from the original TV show gathered together once again over all these years in 2014. We got to see a sequence of them uh, basically, you know, using the voices that they used for the show and kind of how they were able to come up with the voices for these characters because, you know, at the time they really had nothing to work off of besides the comic books and the action figures. And basically figuring out what kind of voices to use for the characters was, was completely made up by these voice artists. It was just really fun to see, you know, kind of how they came up with it and what, what their inspiration was to use that certain voice as the show went on for a series and just a really fun sequence for me. It was just really fun to see how these how these you know voice actors and voice actresses came up with voices for these, and just a really fun part of the movie. I thought that was just very notable as I was watching the movie. And overall, this is a very fun and stylish documentary. So for those who are big into documentary film, and if you like the Ninja Turtles, this is a perfect combination of both because they really do a great job, you know, doing not only a great documentary but a great documentary about the Ninja Turtles. But for, for my negatives of Turtle Power, since it's not quite a perfect documentary, is I felt like some of the interviews in this had some pretty echoey audio. So like it almost kind of felt like when they were interviewing some of these people, it kind of felt like they were talking with like a giant tin can or something like that. It some some of the audio and some of these interviews don't really quite feel right. There's something about them, rather they misused equipment or didn't have the right equipment to interview them with. Something went down as it, some, of the, some of the interviews were going down here because some of it does kind of feel kind of echoey in some ways. I do feel the film didn't spend enough time on the TV sequels. Um, I'm sorry, the, the film sequels and the TV interpretations of, of the of the Ninja Turtles. Um, they do briefly cover, you know, how Lard and Eastman felt about Ninja Turtles 2 and how they briefly felt about Ninja Turtles 3, but they didn't cover TMNT at all, which unfortunately I didn't really care for either. And they didn't cover the reboot at all, unfortunately, either. Um, and they also didn't cover the TV interpretations of, like, the live-action version of the show, um, the Fox Box version of the show, and they also didn't cover the interpretation of the Nickelodeon version of the show either. So... Um, it was kind of too bad how they kind of skipped over those parts because I really would have liked to see Eastman and Lard's take on those. Um, but yeah, they, they unfortunately kind of skip around those a little bit. Like I said, they do briefly cover the second Ninja Turtle movie and the third one, but they don't quite spend enough time on it the way that they did with the first movie. And I really would have liked to have seen more of that. Uh, the film covers almost nothing about the film reboot at all. I know that this documentary is probably filmed... Uh, before the newer Ninja Turtle movie even came out. But at the same time, though, I would have liked to have seen, like, you know, like 
a filmed trailer reaction, maybe from Lard and Eastman, or maybe how they felt about the trailer, or how they felt about the production photos, or something simple like that. Something that could have at least been around in 2013 that they could have had an opinion on, and but they kind of just completely skipped by it, and I, it kind of really annoyed me in a way. The film also glorifies the music tour that the Ninja Turtles had at one point in the early 90s, and that's kind of unfortunate, and they kind of glorified it. Like I said, they, they kind of made it feel like it was a big deal, and it really wasn't. Not a lot of Ninja Turtle fans really look back on that music tour that the Ninja Turtles had and really be like, whoa, that was great. They, they, kind of were, they were treating it like something that it wasn't, and I don't know, it kind of bothered me, and I, it will probably bother a lot of fans who watch this too, because it's like, what's this like? That wasn't big of, that big of a deal, you know. The bigger deal was the arcade game and the show and the games and the, you know, merchandise. And they kind of treat, like, the music tour like that's what the Ninja Turtles were. And unfortunately, that's not what the Ninja Turtles were. But overall, I'm going to give Turtle Power an 8.5 out of 10. It is a very well-made documentary. But like I said, some of the echoey audio and some of the interviews, uh, the fact that they rarely spent any time at all about the film sequels or the later TV interpretations from Foxbox and Nickelodeon kind of bothered me. Uh, the fact that they didn't do almost nothing for the film reboot that recently happened. And like I said, they do glorify that music tour that they had in the early 90s, which wasn't that big of a hit, to be honest. And I'm kind of shocked that they were glorifying it the way it was because it just didn't feel right. But like I said, if you like documentary films... If you like Ninja Turtles, you know, if you like the show or the movies or the games, this is definitely worth checking out. They definitely do justice to those things. But like I said, don't go into it expecting the next Super Size Me. It really was not quite that high quality of a documentary, but it was very stylish and fun. And if you like the Ninja Turtles and if you like the, the art of documentary films, it is worth checking out. So 8.5 out of 10 for me. Um, it is kind of hard to find it for those who are considering looking this, you know, and tracking it down to view it. But like I said, if you love Ninja Turtles, it's definitely worth your time and money to check it out. So uh, 8.5 out of 10 for me, pretty good documentary film.